Hi everybody, uh, Dr. John here from Extract Lab. How are you guys doing? Today I'm going to be talking about how to calculate operating costs for your CO2 extraction facility or your CO2 extraction equipment. We're going to be going through some of the main operating cost contributors and uh, we'll follow up at the very end with an understanding of what kind of footprint, ESG footprint, in other words, uh, carbon footprint, that the operation will be contributing to the environment. So let's get started. Here I have a, a list uh, of items, a production volume estimate per day, production cost estimate per day, and then with all the cost factors. And then here at the very bottom, an estimated cost per day total and production cost per kilogram produced. And then here's some capital expenditure plus operating costs in a cumulative fashion. So I'm going to be going over those items. Depending on the piece of equipment that you use, you have a capacity, a cycle capacity, a biomass, basically a certain number of kilos. So if you're using the E180 CO, supercritical CO2 extractor, this is 16. If you're using a, a 140, this would be eight. And actually the range is seven to eight. So this is the top end of the range. And this is where you can put in your plant potency. You're looking here to estimate the potency of your biomass material, it can range from 5% all the way up to 20%. If you're just running flour, it could be 20%, for example. And then these are efficiencies that are associated with the process to obtain distillate or isolate. And you can see that as you move through the process, you're losing and losing and losing because you're increasingly processing your materials. And then this is the total output of distillate or isolate per cycle. So you can get an idea of what your yields will right here are the number of machines that you would be running and then the number of cycles per day now number of machines is pretty straightforward here you can toggle that up and down in this case if you do e180 which is 16 kilos per hour and you have three of those you're going to be doing about 3,000 pounds per 24 hour period that's about 1392 kilos that's for 29 cycles now the number of cycles can go up and down depending on your method so if you use a subcritical method, for example, and you're doing maybe you know, 10 cycles per day or two, you know, two hour runs, or maybe you're doing a co-solvent method, which we've been doing since 20, 2015. Those are a little bit faster, so you can get more cycles out per day. This number right here really depends on your method. A strict up uh, supercritical CO2 method with no co-solvent running at high pressure Typical, you get about one hour runtime, so you do about 24 cycles per day. Maybe with breaks and everything, depending on what your labor is, maybe you get 23 cycles per day or something like that. So you can see here that's 24, 28 pounds per day. And as we go down, the first question is, okay, well, how much CO2 do I use and how much does it cost me? Okay, so CO2 can be used here if you have, you know, if you buy it in bulk, this will be right around four cents a pound. If you buy it in a cylinder, it'll be approximately 50 to 75 cents a pound, depending on where you're located. I really encourage those people who are operating more than 500 pounds per day to really go to your local CO2 supplier. Typically with a beverage truck or something like that, they can deliver you know bulk amount of material. You might want to get a micro bulk system in your facility and that way you can get these a very low co2 costs we pay right now four cents a pound so that's that's where i'm going to keep it there but you can see that's about 61 dollars a day in solvent costs for approximately one ton per day yes you do need to ethanol winterize the co2 if you're not going to winterize in the system and so one of the ways to do that is to use ethanol dissolve the oil in the ethanol and then uh, cool it down, precipitate it, and filter it, okay? So that's gonna cost you money, but it's only gonna be cost you a little bit. You get uh, basically 21 liters per cycle applied. You get a 97% evaporation and recovery. That's in other words, the recovery that you get from the oil. So there's a little bit of ethanol left in there. And then this price right here is the price per gallon with an excise tax. So that's a food grade ethanol. Some people say they can get it a lot cheaper than that. Uh, fine, you can put your own number in there. Um, but suffice it to say that the food grade ethanol is going to cost, and that's just that's just the way it is. So typically you're right around $31, and that's what we pay here when we buy it by the tote. It's $31, and the tote is about 250 uh, gallons of ethanol. Now here's the electrical costs, and you can toggle in 
essentially or enter in your cost per kilowatt hour. In our case, we are at it's nine cents per kilowatt. Maybe you are 12 cents per kilowatt hour. You can just put in your number there and get an electrical number per day. Now you can see this is the total cost for the full solution. That's, that's basically all of the energy that you would need to run this uh, particular plant. And then the labor, you can put your local labor rate in there. If you're going to be running uh, three hours per day or three shifts per day, you need about uh, three operators per shift, and that's about nine operators. So that by far is costing the most of the labor. To get this type of uh, a system with three of these units, along with all the distillation units, you really do need to have about several million dollars, and you can configure that however you'd like it. I'm just going to put in a figure of 3.3. So that gives you total cost per uh, kilogram of about $38 with a total estimated production cost per day of $47.66. Now, this is not including your biomass. You would need to add in your biomass to that. But whether you're doing uh, ethanol or CO2 in terms of your extraction, your, that, that biomass cost is essentially the same. So next thing I'm going to do is compare this CO2 cost here to an ethanol operation as well. But before we move on, I also want to show and point out to you that these are the amount of CO2 pounds that are emitted. And keep that number in mind. There's about 29,000 pounds that are emitted during this process of, of CO2. And that has to do with things like the CO2 actual emissions here of the, of the excess CO2. Also, the ethanol itself contributing to the CO2, this number. And in fact, uh, you'll find out very soon that the vast majority of this number is actually from this ethanol winterization. That should give you a clue as to the ESG footprint. Essentially, the way I calculated this is a quarter per gram distillate produced. That's what you get for CO2. Now I'm going to go on to the ethanol operating costs. We're going to do a straight up comparison. So over here on the 80, here we had 16 and 3 for 24, 28 pounds. And we're going to compare the same exact number of pounds produced. So here we got, we got a plant potency of 10%. We got a plant potency here of 20%. Okay, so we're going to increase this to 20%. So it's apples to apples. This about total biomass process per day, I need to adjust this down to 1,100. So I'm going to take this times two. Okay, so it's a little bit more. Okay, that's fine. 50, I'll put this on 50 or 40. So this is essentially also the runtime for single pass, and that will get you approximately, take that number times 2.2 times 2.2, and that'll get you 2,300 pounds. So it's almost, it's apples to apples now. So total number of biomass process per day, 20%, two machines, 40 passes. You can see here's the yields for those. And here's the total yields. Here the total distillate oil per day is 99. You can see here, uh, total distillate oil is 23, but you're, you're processing approximately uh, 23.93. Now here's where uh, production cost estimates per day uh, really, really take a stark difference. Okay. Basically you have ethanol loss. So because the ethanol sticks to the biomass and when you put it through the centrifuge, you don't recover 100% of it. You never recover 100% of it. So when you talk about recovering ethanol from evaporation, remember over here, I have a number here, it's about 97%. So you take the losses due to extraction of about 5%, and you take the losses due to evaporation of about 3%, you're right around anywhere from 90 to 95%. And so I'm gonna model this at 92% recovery. And then we have the same amount of money per gallon with excise tax. So that's how much you're losing in ethanol per day. Now, you also have startup and reuse costs. You have to have enough ethanol on hand. And the reason I didn't uh, model this item over in here is because the losses here make it so that you don't actually reuse anything. You just, when you get a barrel, it's lost. The number of cycles that you do is so low. You do one cycle per day. You're gaining 97%, so you're losing more, so you're always adding more to it anyway. So there's no real reuse cost because the amount that you're using is so small. On the other hand, with the ethanol, 
you can't just continuously reuse it again and again and again and again. You have to take the amount of volume that you have on hand and you have to look at the number of cycles that you're going to run with it and you have to specify a maximum number of cycles according to the FDA. You have to specify criteria by which you can reuse that ethanol and then you have to test it to that criteria. So there are some costs associated with that and here's some estimate in days between changeover and things like that. I've estimated approximately $600 per day just in ethanol reuse costs. And then there's the solvent waste cost. That's when you do reuse this, you have to recycle that solvent and typically it's incinerated or you bring it to a solid waste or a hazardous waste provider, they pick it up, it's in barrel, and that's uh, typically about $3 per gallon. You can toggle in your own amount in there to see how much that would cost per day. Also, a lot of times because the ethanol is intercalated and has uh, ethanol in it, oftentimes it needs to be you know, manifested as hazardous waste. So it really depends on your local jurisdiction. Uh, whatever you do, if you compost it outside, you're going to be getting VOC, which is smog producing. Or if you manifest it as a solid biomass waste, you're going to have to pay to get rid of it. So a couple different things there. And I've estimated some costs based on some quotations that I've gotten for solid biomass waste. Now, this is a really keyed and toggled for uh, and calculated for this amount of kilos per, per day. Okay. And you can put in your own numbers there, but these are some of the costs that you ought to be thinking about. Now we're going to talk about energy costs, and you can see that there's a very large energy costs here. That has to do with the fact that you have to use like approximately 30 gallons per cycle in order to run the extraction, okay? And what you're doing is you're heating that up to evaporation, and then you're cooling it back down to minus uh, 30 or minus 40 degrees, and then you keep on doing that for every cycle. And the more cycles you do, the more money it costs you in electrical. Now, to make this uh, fair to apples to apples, let's put this at 0.09. I think we have it on the other scale here is 0.09. Yep, there it is right there. And this would be 0.09, 0.09. And then we want to do 20 per hour. You know, a lot of people say that you need less operators to run this equipment. But that's not necessarily true, especially with these cycles that you have. There's a high number of cycles. That's a manual process. So I'm just going to keep the labor exactly the same as it is over here, nine people, so that uh, the labor actually is no good. And then, of course, you have the biomass. You can put in your capital investment for one ton of ethanol. Maybe it is a little cheaper. So let's just say maybe it's a million dollars cheaper, cheap two, four. So there it is right there. That's for investment. And, you know, there's a lot of other hidden costs that we're not talking about, like the C1D1 rooms that you have to have, those are expensive, and the other processing equipment that you would need. But you can see here the cost per kilo <clears throat> comparing to the, the CO2 at $38. If you had put in all the costs here, including the ethanol loss cost, the ethanol reuse cost, all the solvent waste costs, and the electrical costs, you're talking about a much higher cost per kilogram of distillate output. So that's something that you need to be thinking about. It's almost 315% of the cost of CO2. Now, this right here is the capital expenditure here plus operating costs. And what we've done is we've plotted this out here as a function of time. And you can see this is the ethanol cost here on this line as a function of time putting in all the operating costs. And this right here is the cost of ethanol, or sorry, the CO2 as a function of time. And you can see this is starting here at a little bit lower on the y-axis here. What is plotted here is total dollars here, and this is months. And that's because we assumed that the capital equipment would be uh, less expensive than the, the extract lab equipment starting out. So and you can see there's a crossover right around five months. So you're gaining all of this improvement. And at the end of two years, actually, that equipment is costing you about $4 million less per ton per day. So that's a really big deal. Hopefully this helped out, helped you guys out. And uh, we'll follow up with uh, more data later. But before we go, I think that it's very important also to highlight this number right here. This is the ESG number. This is the CO2 pounds emitted. 
and you can see that not only does ethanol cost more, it also costs the environment a lot more. If you compare this number of 9.4 million uh, pounds of CO2 emitted per ton versus 29,000 emitted per ton, it's not even in the same ballpark. Yeah, so thank you for joining me for this analysis. I hope it was helpful for your business plan. The bottom line here is that CO2 is about 18 times less energy cost compared to ethanol. It's 125 times less solvent loss cost, six times less solvent startup cost, 394 times solvent reuse cost, and three times less infrastructure cost, which we haven't even talked about here. So hopefully this was helpful for you. Those are some uh, numbers. There's some estimates based on assumptions, of course. You can put your own assumptions in there and kind of validate and verify what the ranges are and what I just told you. But fundamentally, it's not even in the same ballpark in terms of operating costs. CO2 is so much better. And it's not even close when it comes to environmental impact in terms of the comparability. Ethanol is an environmental disaster, period. So if you want to use that, that's fine. But just be clear, you're going to be producing a lot of VOC. You're going to be producing a lot of waste, toxic waste. You're going to be producing a lot of solvent loss, and, and you're actually using a solvent that is uh, very environmentally unsound. So uh, those are some things that you need to think about, bake it into your business plan, and hopefully we can serve you in the future. And we, we obviously do extraction equipment, the extraction facilities, so we do consulting and facilities design. So if you need any help from us, just make sure you give us a buzz. All right. Hey, thanks a lot, and thanks for joining me, and take care.